Today, I will show you how to make the following viral animations of Iman Godzi in CapCut using Flip Animations. Let's see how to make a number counter, how to move texts, animate images, embed videos, and at the end, I have a bonus animation for you that one of you requested. Let's jump into it. I'm moving the animations further to leave room behind the first one we're going to make. First of all, we need a white background, the edges of which we round with the help of the mask function, then I add this white circle image to a new layer, copy it and position it so that it roughly resembles the original. I import the profile picture that I want to display on it, scale it, and then use the mask function circle shape to crop and position it. After that, I put a black background on a new layer, turn off the uniform scale function and set the appropriate width and height, position it and lower the transparency to create this filter stripe effect. If you look at Iman's animation, several things change at the same time. First of all, the circle animation starts a little later, so I cut a bit from the beginning and adjust the length of the layers above it. I will place a keyframe at this point and at the beginning I reduce the width to 1%. I will also adjust the layers a little so that the animation of the circle layer starts earlier than where the animation of the white square ends. I place two keyframes and adjust the size of the first one, then repeat this with the profile picture too, and I also put a 360 degree rotation on the second keyframe, and finally, like the previous ones, I animate the gray stripe as well. I put keyframes at the beginning and at the end, and then reduce the value of the width at the beginning. I check my work, refine and correct the values where necessary. After that, I draw a new text layer, set its start and length, rewrite the text, set its color and size, position it, and then set the type 1 animation at the beginning. I missed the second text layer, so I'll rearrange the previous text layer a bit, and then rewrite the text. Since CapCut does not allow the end character in the text, I will use a plus sign instead, but if you want to write an end sign, you can solve the problem by importing an image about it. Finally, I set the font style to ZY Panacea and the color to dark gray, and set the fold animation to the front. I quickly check my work, and since I'm satisfied with it, I make a compound clip out of it. I made a 15 second flip for animation with 5 colors so that I could determine how many auxiliary elements I would need to position my animation. I want my animation to be roughly around the first green or blue so it will need 3 or 4 elements in front of it. If you want this 5 color flip for animation you can find it on my Google Drive. I delete this auxiliary animation then copy the compound clip created earlier put 4 red background images in front of it, and then put 10 other images behind it to complete the 15 cycles. I adjust it because a background is also needed behind the compound clip, so I quickly move it up and put it behind it. I undo the compound clip, then select again all the elements and the 15 red background and create a new compound clip from it, then drag the flip 4 animation over it, which will look roughly like this. Since the flip 4 animation shrinks the image, but in order to be able to export it, we need a background to be one single color, so I change the plain background to red, resize and rearrange the order. Then select the animation and use the range menu to export only the selected part. When it's done, I import the finished animation and drag it into a new layer, hide the other one, put back the black background, cut the beginning and end of the video where the animation is not visible, and then use the chroma key to make the red parts disappear. And here is our finished Q&A animation. The next thing we will make is this number counting animation. We'll need a white background, but in order to accurately scale it for the flip animation, I'll use this 1080 by 1080 image. I drag it onto a new layer, adjust its transparency, and then resize and position the white background in such a way that it remains within the boundaries of this red square, but still resembles the original video. Once I'm done with it, I duplicate the white background layer, replace it with a black background, reduce its height by 4 and its width by 2% compared to the white, revealing this white frame. There is a dollar sign in the background, for which I will use this image. I simply drag it onto a new layer, reduce its size to match the original, reduce its transparency, then duplicate the black background layer and place it above the image. And using the split animation in the mask menu, I rotate it 180 degrees, increase its feather property, position it and adjust the values. Next thing we need to do is the number animation. Since we have to animate the numbers and change the order of the layers, it is not good to use text for the numbers as we have to combine them later into a compound clip. So instead, I made all the numbers into separate pictures. I drag the first two numbers, which are 2 and 3, and position and scale them until I'm satisfied with the image. 
I go back a few frames, then copy the layer of the second number, shrink it to a smaller one, and then cut the original layer in two at the end and beginning of the new layer. I change my top layer number three to two and move it to the bottom. I place keyframes at the beginning and end of the layers and adjust it so that the original layer is in place at the beginning and moves up, and the other number goes up from the bottom to the place of the other layer. It is important not to change the value along the x-axis, only the y-axis, and even then both layers must be moved up in the same speed. After that, I erase the part behind the original layer and copy the two new layers, replace the numbers with one smaller one, i.e. 3 for 2, 2 for 1. Then copy as many times as we want to change the numbers and replace them reducing the numbers one by one, like with the previous one. After I'm done swapping the numbers, I extend the length of the last number on the second number layer. After that, you can change the first number, which is practically the same method, but since the animation is slower than before, I make the number change three times longer to make it slower. So I split the original layer into three parts, copy the middle, place keyframes at the beginning, Rewrite the y-axis value to match the y-values of the previous number, extend the new layer to its full length, and delete the last part of the original layer. I quickly check the animation, and since I see that everything is fine, I put the red background on a new layer and rewrite the layer order so that the red background is really behind the numbers, but only the numbers. It is important that only the numbers are visible, because we want to make the numbers disappear with the mask function, but if we don't do this, then we would have to coordinate them all one by one, frame by frame, or if we combine them into a compound clip, then we would no longer be able to apply the flip animation to it later. I select the red background, then export the selected part, using the range function. I import the completed file, drag it onto a new layer, delete the red background layer, turn off the visibility of the number layers, and make the rest visible again, then use the chroma key to make the red background disappear. After that, I use the mask slash film strip function to cover the parts of the counter that extend beyond the frame. And this is where the sucking part started. Since this is now a moving animation, I wanted to apply a blur effect similar to the original video, but I got worse than worse results, especially when I increased the strength of the blur. So this is the part where you have to play around a bit and see what works best for you. In the end, I reduced the motion blur effect to a minimum, exported it again with this slight distortion, and then selected with the mask slash rectangle function so that only the part inside the frame was visible, thus masking the distortion on the frame. So it would have been easier afterwards to copy the counter layer based on the example of the Ali Abdul video, and put a blur effect on the second one. But now it doesn't matter, we learned from this as well. I place the red background images behind it, then combine it into a compound clip and drag the flip 4 animation, then another export import on the video part, a small cut at the beginning and at the end, then using the chroma key function I hide the red background, I place two keyframes at the beginning, in which I animate the initial animation using the mask slash film strip function. We should get something like this as a final result. Let's continue with our next animation, in which we will manipulate texts and stickers. As before, I create the white frame, i.e. first I drag the white background onto a new layer, change its width and height with the help of the red square background and resize it to the appropriate size, delete the red auxiliary layer, copy the white layer, replace the black background, I reduce its width and height as I did in the previous animation. I drag this X sticker onto a new layer, cut it off where the animation first ends, delete the part behind it, convert it into a compound clip, resize it. Go to the Adjustments tab and set the saturation value to minus 50 so that the red X animation becomes gray. I reduce the opacity value a bit. Using the Freeze function, I freeze the last frame and increase its length. For the sake of simplicity, I will use this user icon throughout, but don't be as lazy as me and do it properly. I resize it so that it roughly matches the original, apply the fade in animation, and then draw a new text layer. I replace the text, resize it to fit, and then set the sunrise animation. Oh wait, no I don't, because the latest updates have completely ruined this too. So I'll stick with the simple slide up animation, I hope it still works. I copy the icon and the text layer, move them a little further back, position them so that they match the previous one, but move it a little lower, cut off the overhanging parts, rewrite the text, adjust it a little more, and then copy the icon and the text layer again. I repeat the previous steps, that is, I reduce the length of the layers, correct and position the text and the icon layers. 
I quickly check the result, then the red background, the range function, and then the export import trick. I drag it onto a new layer, move it on top of it, put the red auxiliary background on it, multiply and position the layers, select them all and merge them into a compound clip, drag the flip 4 animation over it. Put the red background behind it again so that it fills the entire screen, rearrange the layers, then range function again, export, import. Now I cut off the beginning and the end, then use the chroma key to make the red part disappear. Place two key frames at the beginning and a bit further back, and use the mask slash film strip function to animate it like the original, and we're done. Here's the result. Let's practice a little with this animation. Here we will work with images and texts. First of all, I copy the white and black layers from the previous animation, double the black background, copy the user image, resize and position it, select the fade in animation, then create two key frames at the beginning of the layer in which I adjust the ratio, so that it starts larger at the beginning, then it becomes smaller and smaller, I reduce the opacity value, then move the second black layer above the user image, and rearrange the layer order. After that using the mask slash split function, I rotated it by 180 degrees and setting the feather value to cover the lower part of the user layer. It's about right, so I'll continue with the text layers. I copy the text layer from the previous animation three times, rewrite the text, and remove the animation from the top two. I set the font size and style, position and resize them. I check and compare it with the original, then I make minor adjustments to make it more like it, and if everything is correct, I continue with the usual Flip 4 animation preparations. I put the red background behind it, rearrange the order of the layers, insert the auxiliary red images, and copy the layers backwards. Since I left the red background from the previous animation here, for the sake of simplicity I select this and export the selected part, then import it, select the Flip 4 animation, range function, then export import, cut the beginning and end, then chroma key, hide the red part, I place two keyframes for the frame strip animation, and here is the end result. Let's see another animation, where I'm going to do this glowing circle trick. I copy the red, white, and black background layers from the previous animation, and hide the red background layer. After that, I drag a new white background onto a new layer, rotate it and enlarge it, then create a white circle using the mask slash circle function. I duplicate that layer, replace it with the black background, and then reduce its size so that only a thin white strip is visible from the former white layer. I copy these two new white and black layers and resize them so that they form a smaller but similar thickness inner circle. I copy it once more and create another inner circle, then I copy the previously used user icon in the middle, hide the circle around it using the mask function. I check that everything is proportional, and then I continue with the animation of the user zooming in and the circle brightening. First, I place two keyframes on the user layer. In the first one, I enlarge the image up to the edge of the white frame, from which it then shrinks back to its place in the middle, and I put a fade in animation on it. After that, I select the white layers and reduce the opacity value so that it is gray instead of white. On the top inner layer, I create three keyframes offset by five frames from each other, so that the opacity value of the first one is 50, the second one is 100, and the third one is 50 again. I repeat this on the second layer so that the first of the three keyframes is the start in its second position, i.e. it should be five frames later than before, and I repeat this on the outer white layer as well, shifting the three keyframes by another five frames, but I delete the third one. I move away a few frames, copy the second keyframe, thus reaching that effect that the outer ring lights up for a while, then I repeat the previous steps backwards, that is, I place new triple keyframes on the upper layers. I'll compress the keyframes a bit to make the animation faster, and then I'll check the result compared to the original. Everything looks good, so here comes the flip 4 animation steps. Copying red auxiliary backgrounds, etc, etc, you already know this, I won't waste your time with it. Here's the final result. Oh wait, there's one more thing I wanted to show you, and it's none other than this rotation animation. Again, I copy the red, white, and black layers from the previous one, drag this dollar image over it, cut out the dollar sign, place this recycle image around it, resize them, lower the opacity value, place a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of the recycling image, I adjusted the rotation value so that the rotation speed is roughly the same as the original. I double the black background, apply the mask slash split function as before, drag the house and gold images and text layers. I adjust, 
position, resize, and animate them, then based on the previous ones, I redo the steps of the Flip 4 animation. And here's another Iman Godzi animation. And one last bonus clip that one of you asked about, how to make this spinning mobile animation. I downloaded this iPhone image from the internet, I put a red background below it, put the red square background above it, so that I can scale it, I reduce the size of the iPhone, so that it is inside the red square, and then I delete the auxiliary layer. I drag this video downloaded from Freepik onto it, cut it to size, use the mask slash rectangle function to crop it around so that it fills the white part, but is within the frame. I round the corners, rearrange the layers, and create a new compound clip from them. However, here comes a little trick, because now I will use the Flip 6 animation, which looks something like this. I change the red background to yellow, because the chroma key works better with this clip, and then I export the clip made in this way using the range function. I import it and place it on a new layer, place the red auxiliary background above it, and slowly step through the animation to adjust it so that the animation is always within this frame. First, I set the keyframes roughly every 10 frames, then I go through it again and condense the keyframes where necessary. I select the last frame of the animation and stop it with the freeze function. At the beginning of the animation, I manually create two keyframes for the slide and animation with enough extras to smooth out the movement along the X coordinate and then I make it disappear from the picture with a slide up animation at the end. Here is the final result. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. So as a thank you, let me offer you something that I only want to give to my dedicated viewers. I have started an email list in which I will share exclusive content about my videos and offer a 50% discount on my course starting in 2024 if you sign up before the end of this year. The rest will be in the email. So once again, congratulations for making it this far, and don't forget, I'll see you in the next one.